Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how to convert elemental weight percents into oxides. So let's say you have a solar composition or any other star composition and you want to look at exoplanets. That's a case where you might have elements reported uh, in weight percent values and you want to convert them to oxides so you can compare them to natural rocks. Or uh, you have electron microprobe data, and in this case I'm going to show some clinopyric scenes, and for whatever reason the probe gives you elemental concentrations and you want the oxides sides so you could do some uh, different kinds of calculations. Well the way we'd make that conversion is we're going to set up a table here where we have the oxides, uh, the oxide equivalents of the elements that we're interested in, uh, set up in the same order. So we have silicon, titanium, chrome, aluminum here. Then we have the oxides of silicon, titanium, chrome, aluminum here all set up in the same order. Uh, what we're going to do is compare the oxide weight percents, uh, excuse me, the oxide uh, mole um, molecular weights uh, and the elemental weights. So this is the molecular weight of silicon dioxide. This is the molecular weight of titanium dioxide, chromium oxide, etc. These are the elemental weights of each cation. So for uh, 28.0855, that is the molecular weight of just the, sil the silicon cation. Uh, we have two chromium atoms here. I'm just showing the elemental weight of uh, chromium, 51.996. For the conversion of element to oxide, we're simply going to take that ratio. For silica, we just have one cation, so that's uh, pretty simple. Uh, we'll just take the elemental weight, uh, multiply it by the oxide uh, w uh, molecular weight and divide it by the molecular weight or atomic weight of silica and we get the weight proportion of silicon dioxide for that sample. Uh, we'll have to do some renormalization. That's why we're calling it a proportion, not a percent. We'll see that at the end. Uh, but we're doing okay here uh, because silica just has one cation. But what about chromium? Chromium has two cations. Uh, well, we could do the same thing with um, titanium. We can really just do a, a fill right here and we'll get the value for titanium. With chromium, though, we have two cations. Uh, per formula unit in the oxide. And so what I've done is I've set up a little table here where in this case we are going to take uh, the uh, molecular weight of chromium uh, dichromium trioxide and divide it by two times the elemental weight of chromium. So to just do that by hand we would take the chromium value, multiply that by the uh, chromium oxide, but then divide it by two times the chromium weight. And that will give us this value here. Now this is the same as taking chromium and then multiplying it by this factor that I've set up over here, which is the same ratio. In both cases we got 0.904-8958. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, just fill right so we can uh, complete all of these calculations. I'm going to use this ele convert element to oxide ratio. And so any, anywhere where we have a single cation like silica in the oxide, it's just a simple rate, weight ratio, uh, oxide divided by elemental weight. If we have uh, two cations, then it's going to be the oxide divided by two times the cation weight. Uh, if we have, well, we don't have any cases where we have three cations, uh, but if we did, then it would be three times the cation weight, etc. All right, so we will take silicon and then multiply it by this conversion factor. I don't want the five, the row five, to change as we fill down. So we'll fill down and then fill right, and we'll fill right a little bit further. And now we'll take the sums. And so in this case, for the, that solar composition, we get this very large value, 160. Uh, that's why it's really an oxide weight proportion. We're going to want to renormalize that, and we'll do so by taking this, multiplying it by 100, and let's try entering an equation. Equals 100 times the silica and then dividing it by that uh, 160 value. We don't want that cha to change, so we'll fix the column AB. 
then we'll fill right again, and then this should give us a sum of 100. Now, if we take a look at these guys here, notice that these sums are all very close to 100. And the reason why is because the electron microprobe data here uh, also usually reports a calculated value of oxygen. Oxygen is usually not analyzed separately. It can be, but it usually is not. And so when you get a, a report of oxygen from an electron microprobe, it's usually calculated based on the weight percent values here and then an assumption of how those cations will bond with oxygen, which we've done here. And notice that the values that we get here look exactly like the totals that we got when we, got, when we looked at the total with oxygen. And the reason why is we've accounted for oxygen the same way that they have done so in the electron microprobe uh, program, however the software was set up. We could account for oxygen differently. Instead of FeO, we could have Fe2O3, and that would change the way oxygen was accounted for, or we could let some of the iron be metallic. And if we made those kinds of assumptions, we would have slightly different values. And if you wanted to preserve these old uh, sums, you could do so by renormalizing uh, to uh, those values instead of 100. Of course, we can renormalize all of these to 100 by filling down that value that we used for the solar value, but I don't necessarily recommend that because when we uh, renormalize to 100, we lose the information for, that we get from the original oxide total, which is reproduced over here. The value of these totals is that if they're very close to 100, we know we have a pretty good analysis. If they're a little bit high or a little bit low, Usually we're looking for something between um, 99 and 101, if we're, and if we're outside that range, we have a total that we might be a little suspicious of. This guy is pretty close to that preferred range of plus or minus uh, 1% uh, from 100, uh, but this is getting pretty far away from that value. It either means that we analyzed maybe a horn blend instead of uh, clinopyroxene, so we thought it was a pyroxene, but it's really got some water in it, or it could be, let's say, an olivine and we're missing nickel, or it's simply a bad analysis. We were fluorescing um, something that we just really didn't account for, um, and uh, there's just something wrong in that analysis. So preserving those original values rather than having the sums completely uh, equal to perfectly 100 uh, can be very helpful uh, if we want to decide which analyses are good or which analyses were bad. In any case, I hope that was helpful. If you wanted to reverse the process, maybe we should just finish up. If you wanted to go in the opposite direction, let's say you had oxides and you wanted to get elements instead, then you could take the same kind of approach. You could take the uh, oxide weight percent and then convert it to an element by taking the elemental value uh, so we would take uh, silicon, multiply it, uh, or in this case, silicon dioxide, multiply it by silicon, and then divide it by the silicon dioxide. And that would be our elemental proportion. Uh, I've made a similar kind of ratio correction here, and we'd have to be careful when we have two cations. Uh, here I've taken just one over the element to uh, oxide conversion. So for chromium, we would take the chromium weight percent here, uh, multiply it by uh, two times the uh, value for chromium weight percent. Oh, I did not enter it as a um, formula. And then we would divide by the oxide, and then we would recover that value and that is the 0.328 we have over here. So just be sure that whenever you're converting elements to oxides or oxides to elements, that those conversion factors account for cases when you have two cations or more cations per oxygen. So again, that element to oxide conversion uh, is going to be a ratio that accounts for the number of cations that are in the formula unit. I hope that's helpful.